Hey, it's Andre. If you saw this video titled Dear Apple HomePod Mini, you would have seen that in that video I was considering buying a HomePod Mini. Eventually deciding not to because there were uh, a few limitations that were essentially putting me off from doing so. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. Now you're probably asking yourself, okay Andre, you've obviously bought a HomePod Mini. And yes, it's here. So what's changed? Have Apple sorted out the issues I had with updates? Well, I'm pleased to say that the answer is no. It's the same HomePod mini with the same issues that discouraged me from buying it previously. So why did I buy it then? Mainly because I wanted a mini speaker and if I was going to buy one, I'd be spending 30 to 50 pounds. So why not spend a bit more money and buy one? And with the HomePod mini, it's going to fit seamlessly in and complement my existing Apple devices. I got this one in space gray because it goes nicely with the aesthetic of the room it's going in. And generally this color would fit in most rooms. Hence why a lot of Apple products are available in space gray but it's also available in four other colors out of the box you get the general bits of useless paper that never see the light of day when they do go back in the box an apple sticker that i never know what to do with and a 20 watt usb power adapter it's a novelty these days to see such a thing inside the box apart from its flat surfaces at the top and the bottom it's almost a perfect snowball size at 3.3 inches tall and 3.9 inches wide making it a little bit smaller than the Amazon Echo Dot and it fits so well and comfortably at 345 grams in my hand but I must resist the temptation to throw it. Surrounding the HomePod is a fabric mesh that as well as making this smart speaker look like a premium product also aids in its ability to produce its uninterrupted 360 degree sound field. This iPod mini reminds me of those knitted beanbag seats. If you've got one of those imagine how nice this would be on a table next to it. On the bottom of the speaker the surface not quite non-slip but it'll prevent the speaker from being easily moved. On the top the only input surface on the speaker, a backlit touch interface that allows you to control Siri and the HomePod Mini's functions which are mainly music control. One issue with the space grey one and any coloured ones except the white one is that the this surface is a fingerprint magnet so if you don't want fingerprints to always be seen, I'd probably suggest getting the white one. When the HomePod is active or when Siri is processing or listening to what you're saying, you'll get this uniqueness of a pulsing orb of coloured light displayed. And my bugbear of the design of the HomePod Mini is that undetachable USB-C cable. The only thing nice about it is that it is a braided cable. Although the white power adapter at the end of it doesn't exactly go with the nice space grey aesthetic. If you've ever set up any Apple accessory before, like AirPods, then you'll know just how easy it can be to set them up. And the HomePod mini is exactly the same. Unfortunately, you'll have to own an iPhone or an iPad to set one of these up. But if you do, all you'll need to do is get close to the HomePod mini with the iPhone and press connect. And now it's available to any of your Apple devices like your iPad, Apple TV, or even your Mac. What I'd have liked to have seen is a dedicated app just for the HomePod and its features, but you can access everything within the Home app. And within this app, long pressing on the HomePod icon brings up what's playing, scrolling down shows you any alarms or timers that may have been set, and either further scrolling down or pressing the cog icon in the corner would give you access to the settings of the HomePod, where you can make all of the regular Apple light changes to the speaker and its accessibility. One of the main interaction features between the iPhone and the HomePod mini is the handoff feature where if you're listening to music on your iPhone you come into the room with a HomePod in it by just simply placing your iPhone next to the HomePod mini you're able to automatically transfer the sound output from the iPhone to the HomePod speakers. Flawless most of the time. And you're also able to do the same thing in reverse, grabbing the sound back from the HomePod mini to your iPhone. By once again putting the iPhone next to the speaker, but instead of it automatically doing it, you'll get a pop-up on the screen asking if you want to transfer the sound back to the iPhone. Doing this in both instances is almost instant. Now if you're having problems with this, when I first tried this feature out of the box, it didn't work. So just make sure that you've got the transfer to HomePod and handoff enabled by going into the main phone settings, general, airplane handoff and enable both of these. If you're already familiar with Siri then you're going to get the same experience here that you'll get with using Siri on any other Apple product. If you plan to use it as a speaker mainly playing music with a direction from your iPhone then you may never use Siri any more than you do now but if you've got something like an Apple Music voice plan for example where everything is controlled and directed by asking Siri without the use of an iPhone because the HomePod is connected to Apple Music via the cloud then this is perfect aided by that 
touch surface for quick control. And if you've got HomeKit compatible devices also within the Home app, then you'll be able to control everything via the HomePod Mini, as well as those basic tasks like creating reminders, setting timers, writing messages, sending and receiving phone calls, and supporting any shortcuts that you've created that are initiated by Siri. I'm always finding that if I say, then it's always a device that I don't want to respond, which wakes up. But as long as your HomePod is active, it will always be the dominant instructor. Thanks to the HomePod's voice recognition, Siri is able to distinguish between up to six different family members, responding to their specific requests while relaying information that is specific to that individual, keeping other information private and secure. As you would expect, the HomePod with Siri works best and most intuitively with Apple apps. Unsurprisingly, it will play music and HomePod directed music best with Apple Music, but sometimes I wish with most Apple integrations that there was a little bit more third-party app support as well. Spotify with this level of interaction would make Siri a much more enjoyable experience because currently if you're playing music from Spotify then you've only got the basic commands and playing anything other than your current playlist would have to be directed from your phone making this nothing more than a glorified speaker rather than a smart speaker. If you've got more than one of these around the house and you don't want to be shouting through the wards just to get the kids to come downstairs for dinner then you can use the intercom feature to either a specific HomePod or to all available HomePods by saying Announce kids, it's time for dinner, and the message will be relayed to all the other HomePods. Or you can't get a HomePod to announce to anything other than another HomePod. If you've got an Apple Watch or an Announces iPhone, or you're using your connected AirPods or CarPlay, then asking to announce your message will get transmitted to the AirPod. You can also stereo pair two HomePods together that are in the same room, and using them as left and right channels for any sound playing from Apple devices. So what does this small HomePod mini actually sound like? The sound quality for such a small speaker is quite big and booming, and it definitely feels a small to medium room with full sound. At maximum volume, which is really loud, you're still getting the clarity in the sound produced thanks to that S5 chip inside, which is constantly making those fine tuning adjustments to deliver the best loudness and dynamic range for the environment. I mainly use the HomePod for the listen to podcast and there's never been a time that the voice of the presenter is distorted in any way and it's always delivered in a fine and clear way. Let's hear a few examples of the sounds coming from the AirPod Mini. You can definitely tell the difference between music played on Apple Music, for example, that takes advantage of these spatial audio features because they just sound awesome, full of bass, giving you that immersion from all directions while allowing you to hear those layers within the song. And if you compare that to songs that aren't taking advantage of those features, then while still sounding big and good, they just aren't as fulfilling. But you're always getting that good, consistent output coming from that of this speaker, no matter which way it's facing. Although, I don't really know how many people would be facing it that way. It's always best to face it that way into the room. First and foremost, this is a speaker. But what's it like when you connect it to something other than your iPhone? Your experience of this will depend on what you use it with. Remember earlier when I said that the HomePod Mini works well with Apple apps? 
that this is definitely where you see that in action. I connected it to my Mac Mini via AirPlay, which essentially works like Bluetooth. And the issue I'd heard about when connecting it to something like this is the delay. And I can confirm that the delay is real. When you press play or pause on a song or video on the Mac, there is a couple of seconds delay before you can even hear the sound coming out of the AirPod. And during this delay, your clip is still playing, obviously without the sound. And when you end the clip, it's playing for a couple of seconds at the end before stopping, frustrating at times. All because of how it's getting the input. With Apple Music, it's grabbing the music directly from the cloud while connecting via AirPlay. The source has to transmit the sound to the HomePod first. All of these issues could be solved with the simple UX input at the back of the HomePod. But when it does play, it's fine. I definitely wouldn't use this if you're reliant on audio editing, but it's certainly better than the Mac Mini's own speaker. So the HomePod Mini, Mini by name, but certainly not Mini by the nature of the sound that comes out. And you'll notice that from the first moment you press play on the first song you play when you're testing it straight out of the box. Definitely a good addition to your ecosystem if you're looking for a smart speaker that you want to play your music, which is going to sound apart and sometimes sound just as the artist wants you to hear it in whichever room you put it in. And if you've got HomeKit compatible devices, then you've got a hands-free device that controls them all without the need to use your phone. And with Siri only likely to get better in the future narrowing the gap with the current Alexa and Google smart assistants then the HomePod's position should be only enhanced within the market. Who is this HomePod mini for? Definitely for someone with an iPhone or iPad. Definitely not an Android phone though because you can only connect it via Apple's AirPlay and maybe an Apple subscription optional not essential and maybe someone planning or has got HomeKit compatible devices around the house. Once again optional not essential. Do I regret buying this HomePod Mini? Of course not. It sounds great, it's really useful around the house and looks good especially for something of this size, which for me as the overall package beats the Amazon and Google offerings that are around this price purely because of the way the sound pours from its speakers. Yes, there are things that Apple could and probably should do to improve this software and hardware wise, especially as this is the only speaker they currently sell, but don't let that take anything away from what it's good at. If you'd like to see how exactly I'd make the HomePod Mini better, check out this video here. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you already haven't. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.